we'll ask the final question for tonight. Um, I will let everybody have their chance to speak. Uh, so if this, if you prepare a statement, this would be the perfect time to use it because that's why I want you to um, give your closing statement and or what question do you wish I had asked you? <laughs> and you know, I'm gonna let somebody volunteer to start and then we'll just go in sequence from there. Take a shot at it. All right. Carl Cash. Uh, I, I consider myself a bit of a watchdog, and so uh, my objective as to holding feet to the fire is not to let people forget, you know, what has happened in the past. I know there's some up here that would like to, but uh, I'm a retired flooring contractor, you know, so I ran a business for 30 years. I'm a retired professional motorsports champion. I'm currently a commercial pilot and flight instructor. I've also paid very close attention to county politics, more specifically how our taxes are raised and spent for many years. It is this attention that I witness abuse of power and corruption that line the pockets of past and current county elected officials, some of whom are present here tonight. We all know what comes with corruption, cronies, also present. Let's look at a short list of malfeasance in, in, the, in the recent past. Using the county's ethics commission as a as a personal goon squad, buying ornate expensive schools. We spent a lot of money on schools. It was discussed. Uh, anybody care to venture a guess how much that decorative uh, Elkton Elementary School raised the, the overall cost of the school? I guess 10 percent. Uh, paying three times more for a community college's new building than it was than it was worth at the time. Buying a library we didn't need for three times more than it was worth but it has a cement pond. Turf fields we didn't need that is yet to raise a single test score. That's school budget, right? Conflict of interest with county contracts. Property zoning changes for cronies that lower our standard of living. Who likes getting stuck behind a truck after it's made a million potholes in all of our roads? Assigning ide an ideologue as moderator to a redistricting committee to assure gerrymandering. I don't know if you guys I paid attention to this. I was in all the meetings until I was too sick to go to the last one. But uh, it was it was swayed. It was tainted by the moderator, right? Scoring political points against our current uh, executive by toying with our county employee salaries, including police officers. Bingo. These are some of the reasons that I'm involved with county politics. I care to have a positive impact for our beautiful county and our hardworking taxpayers. I'm not running for any personal gain. This is a voluntary position. This is about right and wrong. I wonder who else up here is doing it for that reason. Thank you. Charles McCann. Peter McCoy. <laughs> One thing I can tell you, I think I probably have a sense for where I stand on things. The other thing I bring to the table is I'm not entangled with any of this. Then we need fresh blood, we need fresh blood. You can see this without all the, we don't need any of the old fights, the old feuds going forward. We just move forward and I'm not beholden to anybody. I haven't had arguments with anybody. I haven't had business deals with anybody. I'm coming at it as a fresh face and that's what I bring to the table. John Armour, kind of the DNC here between fighters, but I'll read my statements. And, you know, was prepared something. As we all said before, we all need to develop a unity. We cannot be seen as the fringe recovery of the unapproachable outlier county until someone needs our vote or a small county that we're finally on the radar. We want others in the state to desire our company seek our support. The way to get there is hard work and positioning. If you want to be red, be red, but be red big. For as many people in Cecil County, I mentioned that 22% of Independence, that's 15,000 people who registered as independents. We need to find people to do what we need to serve who can truly have the capacity to serve the office. They can win the office, they can sit the seat, and they can sit respectfully and make good decisions. It's not easy. We have opinions, beliefs, and egos, and they're all there. But thanks to the other candidates coming out tonight, thank you, Women's Republican Club. JT, thank you for bringing up the conversation and not bashing Republicans. I'm Don Armour. Like your vote. Come up with flowers. That's fair.
sorry. <laughs> sorry. Kathy <laughs> Kennedy again. Um, I just had a chance to Google that connected DMV, and that's scary, so everybody should take a look at that. Um, I think it's important to bring strong conservative values. Um, as everybody said here, Don had mentioned the independents. We actually need to reach out to the Republicans. There's what? 55,000 approximately Republicans in our county, and there's only expected, the likelihood to vote in the primary is 6,500. That's a problem. So we actually need to get our participation up amongst ourselves. Then we can focus in on the independents and those, you know, those, um, Kennedy Democrats and bring them over because they'd probably rather be with us. Um, but we actually need to, to do that and get more people within our own party out voting. We don't have enough. I mean, 6,500 voters just isn't enough. Um, I hope you vote for me. I'd like to thank everybody for coming tonight and taking time out of your, your busy schedules and your evening where you could probably do much more enjoyable things. Um, it was really a great event, everybody, and thank you very much. Kathy Kennedy. Uh, Matt Beers. Um, so there's two parts to the question. One was the what question would you like to have asked? Which was a little bit more fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the question I wish we'd been asked would be what would our vision be for what, where we see the Central Committee in the next four years? Uh, I think it's important to find out where people uh, not only are, but where they want us to go, uh, especially on a position like the Central Committee, because where we see the Central Committee going in the next four years is where the conservative movement, Cecil County, in large part, will go in the next four years. Um, so not to you know, dwell too much, but I'll, I'll be here after the event so we can talk about um, you know, what I think the, the vision should be. Um, but just to close out, um, you know, my name is Matt Beers. Uh, I, I'd like your vote for the uh, Central Committee. Uh, to, to continue the momentum that I think we as a Central Committee have, have garnered uh, in the community to keep that going and to ensure that we have a, a common sense conservative voice in the county that holds our uh, elected officials accountable, our primary candidates accountable, everyone accountable, um, regardless of you know, party affiliation or creed. Um, and I, I, I think that if we have a Central Committee that's, that's focused on our principles and moving, moving the conservative movement forward, uh, the county will be a better place. Uh, Bill Couts, and I guess the question that I wish we had been asked or, or maybe had been posed here was why has the Central Committee struggled over the last few years to maintain momentum, to maintain its organization, to maintain membership, to be quite honest. There's been turnover, and um, that's a concern. That's a concern. Um, we're supposed to be here unifying the, the, the Republican Party, and the Central Committee can't become unified. They can't push in the same direction or pull in the same direction. That is a very, very grave concern. And if we want to do anything as a Republican Party, we better get that right. We better fix that, we better get it remedy, and we better get it back to where we can actually have um, a unified front if we want to take these things back to the general electorate. Because they're not as, I guess, uneducated as some people would like to believe that they are. We have a very educated electorate, and um, they're not going to put up with this kind of thing. So um, the other portion of that is I'm Bill Callis. I'm running for Central Committee, also running for County Council. And um, I would appreciate your vote. And uh, the last thing is I like watchdogs. I like the people that come in. But I like them to have the facts straight. And I like them to put those facts out there in a way that is with integrity and with honesty, and not throw them out there, throw it up against the wall, and see them say, okay, there it is. Now let's just go from there. Nope. Have your facts straight. Present them properly. Present them appropriately. And then we'll go from there. Thank you. I think that the facts that was built, Mr. Couch, just the knowledge is very important. I think we need to depend on integrity, honesty, and civility amongst ourselves. And I'd like to remind everybody, especially elected officials, that you are here to serve the public, not yourself. Uh, Kevin Emmerich, and like I said before, I've been on the committee since uh, 2014. Uh, the Central Committee is, is uh, a lot of work. It's all volunteer time, and it costs people money to be part of the Central Committee. 
uh, going to conventions and doing different things. And you have to give up a lot of your own time to set up the booths and man the, uh, the booths at the different uh, functions. And then also there's, since I've been on the committee, there's been a lot of turnover. Not only with this uh, previous committee, but also uh, the 2014 uh, committee. Uh, some people left because it was too much, uh, took up too much of their time, and they felt that they couldn't uh, contribute uh, to the, the committee, so they stepped aside. Other people didn't like some of the things that were going on, and they left because of that. So turnover is just the way it is. You know, I mean, it happens. We go out and we try to bring in new people uh, to keep the uh, the role the the numbers up to what it should be, the nine, the nine count, and uh, we move forward. We try to promote the rough Republican Party, raise money for people, and try to help out. That's what we do. Tom Lobo, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Women's Republican Club for inviting me here. I think it was a great forum that you had. Uh, and I, I want to make this short. I'm going to sum this up in three sentences of what I stand for running for Central Committee. Number one, to make committee meetings open to the public again, where we can share ideas and build a brotherhood of conservative Republicans. Number two, go back to treating all Republican elected officials with respect and not go on social media to destroy the candidates who I don't personally support. And number three, Seek creative ideas to strengthen the Republican Party from outside the committee as well as inside. And I'd like to thank you again for the invite. It was a pleasure to be here. Everybody second. Uh, I'm Sandra Ward, and I just want to say, I, I guess, I'd like to talk a little bit about my values. I grew up in a middle class home with uh, my dad was a painter, his father was a painter, and my the great career problems also. Uh, we were taught to work hard, attend church, care for others, respect others' property, stay within a budget, and you know, not spend more than we make. Um, so I'm just saying that I'm new to all this stuff, but I will work hard. And I will bring my values that I grew up with and in my church and my family. And so Clay Stubbs, I guess, didn't get to do a bio much of one uh, when we started, but uh, uh, in the spirit of what everybody else is saying, thanks for having us. We really appreciate it. It's uh, been enlightening um, and interesting. It's the first time I've been part of a forum like this. Um, so I guess uh, uh, where do my conservative values come from? I mentioned that about our historical background, but. Uh, and then thought about some other things based on what some other people have said here uh, tonight. Um, and then, so a story comes to mind. Uh, so I was 16 and I was 15, and uh, some of my friends were getting cars. And uh, I said, Dad, I want a car. And he said, good, get a job. So uh, I, di I did. I worked at Mr. Donut in Elkton, scrubbing the toilets, and then got a job at Baker's Restaurant, busted tables. And then uh, um, over the course of the next nine or ten months, ended up saving enough money that I was able to, to buy a car. So, uh, um, you know, my dad knew what he was doing. Um, you know, I just thought he was a mean old man and, you know, making me get a job. But, uh, but anyway, um, grew up with those uh, conservative values and uh, um, see the need to serve our community. Uh, I've owned my own i built a landscape company for the last 35 years. Uh, I've employed Cecil County citizens that long. Um, I know how to be a boss. Um, I know how to compromise because you have to. Um, you want people to do what you want them to do. Uh, you have to listen to them. And sometimes you have to do it their way and you don't always get your way. Um, so uh, I'd like to be able to continue to serve the county and do it with honesty and integrity and uh, promote our conservative values. Thank you. Anybody feel they've said their piece? So um, 
I just want to let people know if I'm elected what my agenda would be for the next four years as well. Uh, it's kind of what the agenda was in the past four years. Uh, I'm just going to extend it out for another four years. And that would be a full serve productive committee where everyone participates. Um, as Council mentioned, that some people come and go. Sometimes they're not productive. Sometimes they don't agree where the committee's going and they decide to leave. That's healthy. Uh, we've raised $20,000. That's not that's not weak in any form of the word. Um, we get a lot of uh, information out to people as well on social media, websites, and, and emails as well. So we do a very successful job of that. We work with the Women's Club. Uh, Linda Flint, I got her down here to try to help get the club started a long time ago. She did a great job getting it started. And uh, hats off to, to Linda Flynn as well, getting that back on over here. Appreciate it. I'm going to continue to fight against corruption and special interests as well. We're Republicans. We're not special interests. The Cecil business leaders have no business being part of the Central Committee. It's Republicans, not special interests, not developers. And I'll continue to fight for that. Um, I'll continue to communicate and educate voters on these issues which, with facts. Um, I'll do that through social media, websites, emails, imagery, videos, however, however I can get the message out to you folks. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm against CRT. I'm going to publish different forums on that, on CRT, get the word out on what's going on in our schools. Uh, also, tax increases, uh, crime issues, and wasteful spending. These things I, I try to bring to light to people. Hopefully, people appreciate that or at least seen some of it. Uh, I'm going to focus on election cycles like I have here. Um, you know, some of the, the primaries have been a little weak. People haven't come out because there wasn't a whole lot of people being primary, right? I'm pretty sure that people are going to come out this time because almost everyone's being primary, right? Uh, and that's due to hard work from our central committee that we currently have. You know, we want to continue to do that for you guys. Um, and we are a conservative central committee, plain and simple. Uh, we had Trump rallies, we had sign waving, we had bus trips to Harrisburg when Trump was speaking. You know, we, we, had, the, we had it going on. We, we were very motivated, energized. Um, I, I'm looking forward to getting more grassroots people involved like we have up here. You know, I asked, the, you know, a lot of these guys helped me with the redistricting and I carried them on and I want fresh blood too. I want new people. I don't want current politicians. You know, I want people that's like you. I, mean, I want more of you guys out here, up here, you know. So uh, I, I'm very uh, dedicated to getting more grassroots people up. I try to communicate the best I can. Sometimes my communication isn't welcomed because I'm very honest and, and open and direct. And sometimes people don't like that. But that's just the kind of way I roll. So if you're voting for me because I'm direct, you might not want to vote for me. Uh, but I am asking for your vote. I'm going to uphold the conservative principles for our Republican Party, regardless of the liberals trying to gaslight our efforts. This includes many of the Cecil Business Leader PAC members that are here this evening and also running for this position. Uh, I'm not going to let them reestablish the government takeover again. And that's all I have to say. That's the same. It's good for me. Thank you. Um, Ernie Beck. So this has been enlightening. Um, if you want someone that's going to constantly fight amongst each other for the Democrats, skip over my name. Um, that's not what I'm about. Uh, as I said, I've been in the volunteer fire service. We're about uniting and helping. I get up at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I leave birthday parties. I miss Christmases because I go out and help other individuals. I'm not saying that I'm perfect in everything I do because I'm not. But I always put others before myself. Um, if we can bring some of that mindset in to the political arena, we can do a lot of good. Um, doing my best uh, to make things right. There's a lot to be done in front of us. We have to do what's right. Um, one of the problems I see is we have a lot of maintainers within politics. Um, they take what they call the rules, which are unwritten rules, and all they do is maintain them to continue either to elevate themselves or elevate um, those that have helped them get into their positions. Um, I'm a big believer, we don't tear down a fence until we know why that fence is up there. Um, I, I think that's a pretty good analogy for politics. Why are we doing certain things? We're not just gonna tear down a fence and find out that you know we've got 10,000 bulls on the other side that are getting ready to trample us. Um, we're normalizing politics instead of standing up for ourselves, our children, and our future generations. Um, we need to put God back in our schools. We need to get CRT out of our schools. We need to respect individuals. I don't agree with a lot of the individuals in here, but you will not see me 
publicly, uh, whether that's social media or an event like this, attack them. Whatever has happened has happened. It's in the past. We will never get to where we are, reach our full potential if we don't focus where our feet are firmly planted today. Figure out how we can work together to achieve the, the end result. It doesn't matter if we're Democrats, Republicans, race, religion, or anything. The majority of us want the same thing. We just want to take different roads to get there, and that's fine. We should have that opportunity to do that. We need to stop with telling someone's wrong because they don't, we don't agree with their opinion. That's their opinion, that's fine. If it doesn't tread on me, they can have their opinion. We need to unify. I think we unify by every single one of us striving for personal excellence. If we can all get 1% better every day, Think about where we will be as the central committee in Cecil County, but if we can spread that, where will we be in the state and the country? 1% better every day. If you do the math on that, you will far exceed any limitation that you ever thought you had. It all starts with us as individuals and the, the, the accountability we have on ourselves and doing the right thing. We need to have empathy for other individuals. We don't know what they're going through that made them act or say or react the way that they did. We need to have gratitude for everything that we do have. And above all, if you don't have integrity, you have nothing. Because when you look at yourself in the mirror, you're probably not going to like who you see back. Yeah, my name is Ernie Beck. I consider myself a grassroots. This is my first time running for office. I want to bring true public safety first responder, someone who is out there for others, I want to bring that to the Central Committee, to the county, to the state, so we can stop with this back and forth and move forward and reach our full potential. Thank you. All right. We have a bonus question. Um, this bonus round here to, to wrap up the night, because inquiring minds want to know. So uh, there is a request that you if you to show that you have been a lifelong Republican. And then you can also stand if you've been a Republican longer than you've been a member of any other party. And then the icing on the cake. Raise your hand if you have contributed to a Democrat in the last four years. John Ulrich. My best friend. <laughs> and he died. And he's gone now. All right, well, I want to thank everyone for your participation tonight. It was a long night, but it was a lovely night. And so